Hey everyone, this is a simple blender video from a simple blender person. I wanted to share a few things that I've learned about using Serpens 2.0 to help you use this add-on to its full potential really, um, at least to start at least. Now this, now this is something simple I'm going to share, but I think it's really powerful. And so let's go ahead and jump right in. I've made my own workspace to work in Serpens, and today we're going to be using the add-on preferences. And so I've got my workspace set up to be able to maximize everything. And in order to, I'm not going to go over how to install Serpens. There's, there's an easy video how to do that already on the support page. But after you have it installed, you can go ahead and click on making a new add-on. And that's all I've done really. So new add-on and let's just go ahead and call this, you know, awesomeness. Give your author name because this is yours and we've we've set ourselves up a nice new graph and one thing new with certain serpents 2.0 is the ability to add more graphs so you don't have to fit everything in one location you can actually add more so be aware of that and you can bookmark your graphs and they'll show up at the top so you can easily toggle between the two now let's go ahead and get jumping in so we'll make this um we're going to set up just like every good add-on developer who likes to work in the 3D viewport. So I've got add-ons here that I make use of. Um, it's really handy to be able to have your add-on referenced in something like this. So if you want to make your own, we're going to go ahead and do that. So on this new graph, we're going to call this the uh, sidebar. And in here, we can go to the interface and we're looking for a panel. And the nice thing about this is they have it set up to be able to help make things super easy. So click on the icon dropper, select our location, and when we compile, it's going to add it to this location in a 3D viewport UI. We'll go ahead and name our category. So this will be the, the category that it's going to show up as, and we'll just call this awesomeness. And the panel, let's go ahead and just call it AWS for the label. And when you hit compile, there you go. So we have a nice little header label and the category. Now what if we wanted to change this? We could totally do that. So we could call this AWS and we could call this awesomeness. Right, and hit compile. Keeping the letters short on this helps a lot, especially when you have lots of add-ons. Well, what if somebody wants to be able to rename this? That's that's a really handy feature, and rather than bugging the developer about it, please will you rename this to something else? You can let the user have their own power um, to do that. So before we get into making this panel, let's just go ahead and make a way so we can rename this. And a new thing in Serpens 2.0 is the ability to make use of properties. So we're going to make a property that is going to interact with this panel and we're actually going to use some scripts to help out with that so let's go ahead and add a property and we're going to just going to call this awesome category and it defaults to adding in a string and if we open this up just a little bit you can uh, attach it to certain types of context i'm going to leave it attached to scene and then you can also include subtypes we're just going to leave it set up to none and you can set up a default value for your property. And think of properties as things that are stored with the blend data or within Blender and they, uh, they hold values. So this is gonna be a good use case for this. And we'll just set up the default value and we'll just set it up to be AWS, like our category here. Okay, now we've got our property made. We can go ahead and make use of the getters and setters. But let's go ahead and on my main graph, I wanna be able to make an add-on uh, preferences. And in order to make use of this currently in Serpens, you actually need to go into the Serpens menu and under the settings, make sure you toggle on the show Python file. This allows the preferences to build when you compile for your own add-on. It, it also creates the Python file and we're gonna reference that. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So I've already got mine clicked on and then make sure you save preferences. 
And in here we're going to add in an interface and we're going to add in an add-on preferences node. And within the preferences node, we're going to just add a couple of things. Um, I like to add in, in order, a column. So on interface, column, and then an interface row as well. So add an interface row. That way you can keep breaking your add-on farther down. I like to set this stuff up in advance. And let's go ahead and add in a label. So shift A and S. And I'm just going to type in label. And we're going to say category. And you can give icons to your interface nodes. So shift A on the inputs. We have an icon here. And what's really cool with Serpens is you can use a Blender icon or you can load your own custom icon. And th that's already been shown in another video, so let's just go ahead and pick something simple and easy and plug it right in. So if we were to compile right now, what's really cool is it automatically shows up to your add-on. And look at that. We've got preferences and then a category all set up. And then I'm going to add another row, and we're going to make use of our property now. So rather than dragging out and adding something, you can actually just come here and grab your getter and interface. Okay, so this is a text input because this is a string property. And when you add it in on your interface and click compile, notice how nothing happens. And this is set up as attached to a scene. And so you need to be aware that you need to add in your scene context. So add in and then I'll just search for scene and then scene context and normally you're going to use active scene because this property is going to live as a part of the scene and then I just hit control H on this node to hide everything else to keep the space nice and clean then I drag it over to the side and now when you compile you'll have a text input and this text here can show up if you want it to um, I'm just going to blank that out and then recompile and there you go so the goal now is to be able to change this property and cause this to change. So if I go ahead and do that, and I'll type in, you know, AWS underscore one. Notice how nothing happens. Well, this property is not really connected to anything other than our add-on preferences. So we want to be able to make use of this property. And when it updates, to run a script that changes the end panel category. Since the sidebar graph has no nodes, this is a great opportunity to make use of properties inside of scripts, and then run it within Serpens. So we're going to go ahead and do that real quick, and uh, hang on just one second. So I, I went around and uh, was searching on the Google and learning how to uh, add more scripting, and I'm a simple man, so why reinvent the wheel when somebody else already knows how to change these names? And I was able to come up with a script that makes use of um, how to change that name. And I typed a script up already, and we're just going to go ahead and open it. And under custom scripts, we're going to grab this one. And the key here is this is on a different add-on. So I need to assign to a variable in this script and then get its attributes. And if it's registered, then we're going to go ahead and unregister it. And then we're going to re-register it with the new property that we just made. And so we're going to change a couple of things here. And then I just print it to the console. Uh, to verify that it happened. And so we want to make use of this script inside our add-on and make use of the node property inside the script. So they, you basically have like a coming into the script and coming back out with data that's changing. So we have our property here. And I'm just going to copy that property name. And going back over to the scripting tab, when you have on your add-on if we come back over here real quick on the Serpens, this Python tooltips or show full Python, show Python file. When you compile, it's going to create the Python file for your add-on. And that's nice because now we can get information about not only the add-on preferences, but also the sidebar we just made. And since it lives in 3D view UI and it has a category, we're going to reference that category. But first we need to get the name of this in the script. 
So this is my script that I loaded, but I'm going to go ahead and grab our add-on. And inside of here, you can scroll through and try to search for it. Or you can just take something like the property um, or this, this category here. So I can copy this, actually, come back over to my script, control F, and paste that in and hit find next. And we're going to wrap the text. So AWS, look at that. We have a Blender category. And this is the class that everything is registering to for our sidebar graph. So all I have to do is grab this, copy that, and then I go to my other script, and I'm pasting that here. Okay, so now I have a variable that I'm creating, and if, if it's referencing this class and the class is registered, we're going to unregister it and reuse that for the category now and the category name is going to be referencing our property instead. So we need to make sure we're in the context of the active scene since the property lives in the scene. And it's back over here. All I have to do is search on this now in my regular script for the add-on. So go ahead and here. And here we go. So this is the actual property name that gets built on the registered properties. Okay, so we'll copy that little bitty there, paste it here, and this thing is ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and save it, and then back over here in our add-on, we're going to compile, but we haven't made use of the script at all. Um, we just made the script available to be used. So all we have to do um, inside of here is we're, we're using this property. And so on the getter, there is the ability to make use of update. So we're going to update here and enter the text. And after the update happens, we're going to run that script. And for every property, you get to use that update once. So once it exists in a graph, it's the only place you're going to be able to make use of it. So just remember that. And we need to make sure we attach it to our active scene. So I just duplicate these, and bring them on down. And on update, I want to run a script. Okay, and we're going to compile. So AWS 1, look at that. Now we've updated our script for our add-on tab. What's really handy about this feature um, is you don't have to rely on Serpens to keep track of a few things um, for you. You let the power go back into the user. And this is what makes a good developer, is giving the user options to make the add on his own. And what's nice about being able to rename, um, you get to make use of some built-in Blender features. So I can actually rename this to item. And now my add-on lives inside the item tab on the end panel. And if I get rid of text period, guess what? It doesn't show up, but it hasn't necessarily removed your add-on, so I don't have to keep on checking this stuff and removing all your settings. So you give a lot of power to the user to be able to do this. But what if you wanted them to be able to revert quickly back? And all we have here is just the ability to change the name. Well, you could always make use of the property um, to reset a value back into it. So you could make a button and compare against the property name for your for your getter on the property and make sure you attach your scene and in a compare node and for simplicity's sake let's just compare it to a stream and let's just say it was AWS that's what we wanted to set up initially anyways okay now we have boolean we can add in an if And if those two are true, then we don't want anything to happen. What we're going to add in a button here that lets us undo or revert back to the original category name. So if, if this is false, they're not equal, let's go ahead and do some stuff. So, well, we want to revert that name. So on this property, go ahead and get a getter, or not a getter, a setter. And we'll set the property name. And always remember, 
make use of the data where it lives. So this lives in the scene context on the active scene. And I can just reset that value. Now we need a button tied to this, obviously, and we need to make an operator that makes use of the button. So a nice thing about operators now, um, anytime you have a button, you typically want to tie an operator to it, unless you're making use of properties um, or specific variables. But let's just call this uh, reset category. And we can actually tie this into a function if we want as well. I might as well show off a few of the new things in Serpents 2.0. So this function, when it runs, it's going to perform this check for us and then reset the name. And let's just call this revert name function. And then I can use a run function script and tie that in here and put on revert name function. Now when I compile, I can actually just click the play button and it'll revert the name for me. And look at that, everything goes back to normal. So delete that out, it's hidden, and click play to run it. And we verify that it works. This is super slick that they've had the ability for you to play test within Serpents. And I wanted to show that um, while being make use, making use of the tools here. So all we gotta do now is add another button. So we're going to add it as the next setup row associated with this. And click on this, make sure that your Serpents logo is shown to show your own operators. And I don't, I don't want to give it any label. We're actually just going to assign an icon. And then let's search for the name undo. Um, let's hit the back arrow. There we go. Now we can compile. So if I hit zero, I can hit the undo button and it reverts me back to an original name. And that's the power of serpents. And what if we don't always want to show that arrow? We can actually make use of this if then check to show up whether this thing is uh, there or not. And so we can do an if then interface as well. And we'll just set up the condition to be the same condition that shows up here. So if it's AWS, it's not going to show up. If we start changing the name to something else, it'll revert the name back. And this is what makes add-on development super slick. You know, in just a few nodes, you've got really great functionality for your, for your users. Hopefully that helps and makes sense. So what we've covered in this video is the ability to make a preferences node, setting up a sidebar panel, and being able to add stuff to it, and then the ability to rename it, since you don't have access to information. I mean, you can rename stuff here, but your user can't access this once you build the add-on. And giving them the access by going in and using the ability to make scripts, and using the scripts with the add-on. After you compile, you can get information from your own add-on script and you can make use of properties in the script and that I mean for me that's the power of serpents this this has taught me a 3d modeler how to make make my own functionality and how to make a good user interface and it's done it in a matter of you know a few weeks time so I hope this has been beneficial I know it's been a little bit of a long video but I I hope and pray that you guys enjoy this and can make use of it and make some awesome stuff so with that, we'll see you all in the next one.